of all, um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, we can say. Um, thank you for coming along to hear a little bit about our project. The first thing we have to record is um, our thanks to the National Railway Museum in York. Um, over the last two years, they've been very helpful uh, in fetching out of their archives the drawings for the Cock of the North. We've had excellent service from them, and we thank them by email as well, of course. So going back to the engine itself, you probably recognise a gentleman there that thinks it's a good idea, Mr. Brian Blessed. There's the engine just behind him in its um, final designed form. Originally, the first 2001 was not streamlined, and it had problems in lifting the smoke above the driver's cap. And when they built the second engine, they put smoke deflectors on it, but they still didn't clear the smoke over the driver's cap because the new exhaust system that they had on was so soft that it wasn't throwing the exhaust smoke high enough. So when they built the third engine, they built it in this form, and that solved the smoke problem. Engines were designed primarily to solve the problem of heavy loads from Edinburgh to Aberdeen. These had got up to 500 tonnes or more, and they required double heading with the existing locomotive fleet. However, the civil engineers on the LNAR said that the weight of two locomotives passing over a lot of their bridge structures was too much. So Nigel Gresley designed a more powerful single engine, which is the background to the P2. So there's the original original. You can see the long chimney there, and that's what's causing the problem for them. It's so soft, the exhaust coming out, that those smoke deflectors uh, wouldn't clear it. That, of course, has got the rotary valve gear on it. This is when they sent it to France to put it on test, because she was burning a bit more coal than what they would like. And I think uh, Mr. Bullard went with it down to Vitry, I think, uh, is the test centre. So that is the exhaust system that was causing them all the trouble. If you can see what's happening, it's the exhaust is entering at the bottom, of course, and splitting and splitting and splitting, and that's lowering the exhaust pressure. So when it's finally emitted, it's a fairly soft exhaust. And that's the problem. It wasn't throwing it over the, the length of the engine and to clear the driving. So there's a nice picture of the original. You can see that chimney again. Now, when they built the second engine, they put more charts valve here on it. They put a set of smoke deflectors on it. It still didn't cure clearing the smoke. And if you look at that engine carefully, there's two sets of smoke deflectors on it. And even the second pair, they still had a problem. Although the water out of Galway, of course, took it back into standard territory for uh, maintenance. So, when it came to engine number three, it's the same as engine number two, the water out of Galway, streamlined. And that solved the problem. So the next three engines after this were all built exactly the same, more or less exactly the same. And eventually, they went back to the streamline number one and put most of the valve gear on it. And then they went back to the streamline number two. So then the whole class was streamlined. And that's the engine that Doncaster P2 Locomotive Trust are going to build. That's a picture of number one after it was streamlined. And with Volschart valve here. That's 
large copy of the North that that has drawn by our um, artist on the trust, and he's drawn it obviously in front of Sir Nigel Gresley's offices, which you can see from Platform 8 at Doncaster. So, the basics of a steam engine. You set the, light, the coal on fire here. Everything is to do with the amount of air that you get through that coal, as to how it burns, how quickly it burns, how efficiently it burns. So underneath the firebox, there's air entry. There's air entry through the door where they feed the, the coal in as well. And this brick arch is to make sure that when the fumes are coming off the coal, if you let them go straight up the chimney, a lot of that fine dust will not have been burnt. So this is an arch that forces the exhaust to be drawn on a longer circuit, if you want. And after it's been drawn around there, it passes through the tubes, which are two different kinds. And all the engine requires is an exhaust here. That exhaust must work because it's to cause a vacuum in here to draw the fire through. Now something that I learned, not being a locomotive man, was when a locomotive goes through a tunnel, if the fireman doesn't close the firing door in the cab, it's possible for the pressure in the tunnel to cause a back pressure down here, and it causes a back pressure through here, and it blows all these flames out into the cab, and that's the, you have terrible accidents. So they have to know what they're doing, even when they're going into a tunnel. And people that don't understand steam engines you know, you'd never think of that, would you? So there we are. So what happens is, if you boil a kettle at home, as soon as it gets to 212 degrees, it will start boiling away, and that water will never get any hotter. It will evaporate, but it will never get hotter than 212. But if you put a valve on it, if you put a stopper on it, the pressure then starts to build up. And as you start to build that pressure up, the temperature of the water goes above 212. So this boiler works at 220 pounds per square inch. And when the, the steam collects up here, that's where it's all collected. And what you do is you take the basically wet steam, because it's in contact with that water there, you take it down here and you pass it through what they call a superheater, and it passes the steam back down these bigger tubes and then back out again, and that superheats the steam. And it takes all the moisture out of it, so that when the steam is then taken off and delivered to the cylinders, you've got high pressure, dry steam, with no water in it. Water, you cannot compress water. So just on that point, by the way, when you stop an engine at the end of the day, and it all cools down, all the steam that's in the pipes condenses into water. And one of the places it condenses is in the cylinders. So again, if you didn't know what you're doing, and you started your locomotive in the morning and start to drive it, you'd have water in these cylinders, and you cannot compress the water. And you simply smash the cylinders open. So naturally, the engineers have built in a pressure valve in the cylinders and a drain valve. So when you see lots of films of locomotives pulling into a station or waiting to go, you'll see two jets of steam coming out near ground level. Then it makes a nice attractive film. But in fact what it's doing is it's removing all the water from the cylinders. Same thing. It looks complicated but it isn't. There's the tubes I was telling you about. The small tubes is what the hot air comes through into the smoke box. The big tubes, these here, and there's some there, a section as well, they take these tubes I was telling you about back inside and back out again. And there is the superheater, the superheater, which then delivers the dry steam down to the cylinders. Yeah. Now, that's what a lady looks like when she's undressed. Uh, that, in fact, is Mallard, 
but it, I want you to put it in because it just shows you how engines go together. That's an engine that's basically had its boiler checked, and the, those lines you can see going over the boiler, they're called crinolines. And when they're happy that the, all the tests are okay, then they'll insulate it and then they'll put the nice cladding back in it. Now this is interesting in view of what's happened in these last few years. This is Doncaster Works in 1934, and those are the main frame plates being cut for the first engine, copper, the original copper of the north. And you'll notice it's one man with a set of ordinary gas pipes here, cutting it manually. Now, I don't know how many people have seen the video that we've just posted, and he was kind enough to post it on YouTube. Have you watched it? Because you can see the dramatic development. Uh, it's space age today compared to what it was in 1934. But they built the engine and it ran. Uh, 